Hello, I'm Claudia Orengo from Handmade.es and in this video I'm going to teach you how to create a long scroll animation like this one with Photoshop. We'll be using a plain image for the computer and then we'll be adding your design here and I'll show you how to create this animation so that you can export it as a GIF or a video. So let's get started. We're now here in Photoshop. This is the end result, but I'm going to teach you how to do it step by step. The first thing you want to do is go to Unsplash or any, any website you want, anywhere you can take an image. I'm going to take it from Unsplash because I love this website. The quality of the images is great and you can use them for free if you want. But feel free to use any of your own photos or any stock images you may have. So I'm going to just simply um, search here for a computer and in order to get the best result in this tutorial, you need a computer screen that it's not in perspective like this one. So that's why I chose the one I chose. So I've been scrolling down until I found one that it's straight. This could work too. We could cut it, but I want to have the full screen view. So I simply scroll down until I found um, this one could be perfect. And this is the actual one I downloaded. All you need to do once you decide your image, it's click here to download and it will be on your computer. All right. So we have part one ready. We have the stock background image. Now we need to get the design. If you've been working with Adobe XD, with Sketch, with Illustrator to create your web design, you can export it from there, but I'm going to do it from a real website. So I'm going to be using my own website. Here we have one of the last services I'm offering and I'm using a plugin, which is this one called Go Full Page. This is a plugin. It's free. It's for Chrome. Once you install it, you will have the icon here. I'm going to leave you the link to install it on the description of the video. And basically you want to click here and it will do a long screenshot of all the website for you. It will load here and you will be able to download as a PDF or a PNG. For this tutorial, I recommend you to go with PNG. Just before I forget, um, if your website has loading things, for example, let me show you. Mine has a few. When you scroll in my website, things will appear. You see how they appear with some sort of animation. So if you have these things, um, make sure you load it first. You scroll down, you charge them all, because if you take the screenshot for the first time before scrolling down, this may break the end um, result. Let me show you. So now it's um, it's supposed to not be loaded. Let's take the screenshot and you'll see how some things will break. You see how here there are some numbers missing. This is because the scroll was faster um, taking the pictures than loading the content. So once it's loaded, your results should be perfect. Okay, so this is the one I'm going to be using. Basically, I'm going to download the PNG because that's what I want to use in Photoshop. And since I already did these two steps, downloading the image and downloading the screenshot, we can move to Photoshop and I'll show you the step by step. So let's open Photoshop and bring here the image. We're going to open it as a new file and we are going to preview it as we can. Usually from um, Unsplash images are super big, so I recommend you to change a little bit the size. To come here, I clicked Command Alt I, but you can arrive from image, image size. So once you have this panel, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller in pixels, maybe 2500. It's gonna be big enough. I'm just scaling down because I don't need it that big, but it's not necessary if you want to keep it at the highest resolution. It just um, probably your screenshot, it will be even smaller than the screen and you would have to scale it up. So the next step is to bring here this um, screenshot. So you can either open it in a new Photoshop layer, sorry, in a new Photoshop file, not layer, 
Um, and once you have it here, you can come to the menu and say duplicate layer and bring it to the one you want, which is the image. Say OK. And here you have it. This will keep the biggest um, scale possible for the screenshot. But if you bring it directly here as a new um, layer, it will load on the height of the base image. So um, it's probably going to be too small and you will have to scale it up. In this case, you will have to scale it down. In this case, up. Doesn't matter. Use the the one that it's more comfortable to you, but the idea is that you bring it in the same document, just in another layer. So I'm going to scale these, Command T, and then we will scale it down to a size that fits the screen. Pressing Alt, um, I go faster because it scales from the center, so it takes half time. So something like this it's perfect because i know max they have this white area here so i'm gonna leave it like this now that we have the width that we want we're gonna put it um, in a position that makes um, a realistic look for the screen but obviously we need to cut it here so that it's realistic that it's the screen so to cut it we're gonna come and use the selection tool, the rectangle one, and we're going to draw here the screen as we wish it to be. So this could be a perfect size. I'm going to draw this and having selected this layer, I'm going to press this button, which will create a mask and voila, here we have it cut. OK, so this step it's done now. You want to open this panel, the video timeline and the animation timeline. If you don't have it open, it's very quick to find. Go to Window and open Timeline. Then it will appear down here for you. And it can either say Create Video Timeline or Create Frame Animation. Whatever it says, you can change it from the arrow like I'm doing here. We're going to be working with Frame Animation, so I'm going to change to this one and click. All right, so now we have the first frame here. Basically, it's like a screenshot of what we created, but it has the layers. So anything I create over here, it will show on this screenshot. Now I want to create the last screenshot, which is when we arrive to the bottom of the scroll. In order to do that, I'm going to be selecting this one, come here and click copy frame and then come back again, paste frame, and it will load this pop-up. It's important that you have this unchecked. Otherwise, any change you apply to one of the frames, it will apply to the previous one and to any other frames you have. And since we want them to be different, it's important you have it unchecked like I have now. So let's press OK, and it will create a second. And as I was saying, I can now change this frame, this um, design from the layers, and it will not apply the first one. So the first thing we want to do is unlink the layer masks with, with the interior. So click here, and now it's not linked anymore. Now let's click in the interior, in the design, and coming with the arrow tool, we can um, move it up. I recommend you to click Shift while you move it, because this will keep um, everything in the same vertical line. So you want to scroll down until you arrive to the end of your design and make sure nothing gets cut. There we go. OK, so here is perfect. Now we have the first frame and the second, right? But if we move from here to here, it's going to be a very big break and we will not have anything in between. So we will create them now. But before doing that, you want to duplicate first this one and then this one, and you'll see why in just a second. So let's take this one, come here, copy frame, paste frame, same section, okay, some settings, and now coming to the first one, we're gonna pick copy frame, paste frame, okay, 
and we will drag it to the end. So now we have original, well, top, bottom, bottom, top. Okay, now let's create the animation in between. We're going to take the first and the second, and we're going to click this button here. This will pop up again another settings option, and we want to decide how many steps in between the first one and the second we want. I found that 40 for this um, length is working well, but maybe you want to add more, maybe you want to add less. Honestly, play around with your own image because it will depend on your image length. So the number, it's not um, a formula for everyone. It will depend for each design. I'm going to select 40. I'm going to say to apply to all layers and to keep the position, opacity and effects. So if you have it like this, click OK. And look, now it has created 40 frames in between the first one and the second one. And what this is, is doing is that each frame it's moving the inside. You see, it's creating um, the animation between the first one and the last one. Now, when we arrive to the last one, which is the 41 in my case, it will stop at the bottom. It will arrive, sorry, it's the 42 in my case. So it will arrive here. Then we will have the 23 that it's like a pause. It's going to be the same design. And then we want to go back up because if it's a GIF, we want this to be um, smooth, right? We want it to be seamless so that it arrives to the bottom and then comes back up. Otherwise, if we leave it like this, what's going to happen with the GIF, it's, it's going to load until the bottom of the page and then do a hard break to the top and start over. So I want to go back and that's why I'm going to take the last two, which are the ones that we previously copied and I'm going to repeat the same steps. Come here and say 40 layers, um, 40 frames, sorry, whatever you have decided. So if you decided 20, put 20 here, if you said 30, 30, 33, 33, keep the same number so that it's really smooth. Let's press OK. And now we have the extra 40 steps here. Now, the last thing we need to do is select all these, pressing Shift from one to the other and change the time. So now it says zero seconds. This means um, there is almost no, you know, no time. There is no time at all in between each one of them. I want a few delay so let's start with 0 0.1 seconds and if you find this is too fast you can go 0 0.2 0 0.5 so the um, bigger this number the longer it will take to change from one frame to the other so now that i have applied this one second to all of them i can click the play at first it may stop yeah like here because it's loading but once it's loaded you will see the real um, the real end result. So let's wait until it loads for the first time. And now we will see it because there we go. So here you can see the end result. You see how smoothly it's moving down and then coming up. And since I clicked here forever, this is the settings that I have. We can see this forever until we click somewhere and we stop it or we simply click the stop button. But you can see only reproduce this once and this will only show you the animation once and it will stop when it ends here. OK, so now how do we export this? Very easy. You have two options. You can create a video or do a GIF animation. First, I recommend you to save this as a PSD so that you can always come back and edit anything you need. So save the Photoshop file like that. You will have all the editable layers and then go to file, export, save for web. This is going to be for the GIF solution. So if you don't have this break up in four, you can go up here and change it to four up. I'm going to scale down so that we can see the full design and I'm going to select here GIF. Here we have it. So 
um, once it loads the GIF, it will give you here the option to play the animation. So you can see how this loads and how it will look. I'm going to click stop and very important, here is where you decide if you want this to only be repeat once or forever. It probably is connected to the last thing you set up here. So if you want a GIF animation, you will want this to loop forever. Once you have this, click save. And now if we want to save it as a video, you want to go to file, export, render video. And from here, you can choose the settings, the name, the folder where you want to save it, everything. Um, usually I leave it as it is. Size, I leave it to custom, but you can choose from the standard sizes um, and the frame animation speed, um, the frame rate, I always leave it as they recommend. So yeah, just choose whatever you want, click render and it will save the video for you. So this is it. This is how you create a scroll animation from any design you have using Photoshop. If you want to learn how I do it in Canva, you can follow another tutorial that I have. I'm going to leave you the link below in the description and you'll be able to see the difference. I hope you like this tutorial. Please give it a like and leave me a comment if you did. And if you want to stay aware of new videos that I post on YouTube, of new trainings and anything I do in my business, I recommend you to not only subscribe to my YouTube channel, but also join my email list. That's the place where I communicate the most with my audience. I'm not currently very active on social media, but I'm all in sending emails and you know, always trying to help everyone through email. So I'll leave you all the links below in the description and I hope to see you around.